you, everybody. And thank you, Cassidy, for that wonderful uh, rendition of the national anthem. Really, really want to welcome you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for coming out here today to uh, share share a little history with us. You know, I was talking to somebody before this ceremony, and this is, this is a national treasure that many in the nation will never see. So, really happy that you could share this with us today. It's my tr tr tremendous honor to be here. It's a momentous occasion. The sheer magnitude of the dam and this day are a perfect symmetry. And the spirit of human accomplishment, which resulted in the construction of the Fort Peck Dam, is a story that should be known by all Americans. First of all, I'd like to welcome and acknowledge any of the dam workers who were involved in the building of the Fort Peck and their family members. If there's anybody that was here, at least raise your hand and, and wave at us and, uh, so that we can acknowledge you. Thank you, sir. In addition, if there's any people who lived here or in any of the boom towns during the dam construction, please give us a wave. And finally, there's a lot of work has gone on since this dam was built, and I'd like to recognize everyone who has worked at Fort Peck at any time. Please give us a wave. That's a whole bunch of you out there. The operation and maintenance this dam for the last 75 years has been an awesome responsibility and it's been executed to perfection as we saw last year when it was severely tested. Thank you and welcome to everyone else. I'm glad we could share this day. I'd like to thank the Fort Peck Project Office Committee for organizing such a wonderful celebration and, and arranging a nice day with a light breeze. I kind of feel like these flags may just flip this whole uh, stage over. Many of the Fort Peck staff were involved in this great event, and I want to I just want to name a couple who have worked so hard to make this day possible. The main movers and shakers, Michelle Fromdale, Darren McMurray, Claudine Hoyer, and John Daggett, Jenny Ann Nowak, please take a bow. And also, you know, something that makes me proud everywhere I go when we see great people like the uh, Fort Peck VFW Post 307, 307 Post who uh, performed the uh, flag ceremony here today, and they have served their country well in the past, and I'd like to thank them as well. Today we stand on hollowed ground. We're standing on a functioning giant, an incredible feat of engineering. It's a launching pad for superior civil works throughout the nation. So many smart, savvy, hard-nosed people that built this dam, and, and that, that that knowledge went on to be shared across the country as other projects like this were, were built and attempted. Today we stand upon the unmarked graves of those who died and were buried here in the slide of 1938. At the peak of construction, 10,560 workers were employed at Fort Peck. Overall, some 40,000 to 50,000 different workers constructed this dam between 1933 and 1940. 61 of those workers died during the construction effort. We have the names of 59 of them, and we will honor them a little later today in this ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, I think he already told you, but please make sure your cell phones are turned off. We're kind of going back to talk about a time when there was a little less gadgetry and things were a little simpler in life. A rough and tumble era where few knew where their next meal was coming from. But it was also a time of incredible discovery and triumphant accomplishment under the harshest of conditions. Think of this. One day in June, the temperature was 120, day, 120 degrees. Six months later, it was 62 degrees below zero. And those people that worked on that dam worked on everything in between. One can just picture the obstacle faced by the builders and planners of this great dam. On one hand, they were thrilled to have found that they, that they had found work, but they had to travel across the country in a way that most of us can't imagine to get here. One can sense the desperation of the times as workers gathered and struggled through the Great Depression. The willingness of those men and women to toil under the harshest of conditions and to apply their strong work ethic, which, which still exists today in this area of the country. That's why Fort Peck Dam is a monument in itself and a reminder of the special spirit of what America is all about. Listen to the words of President Frank, Franklin D. Roosevelt in his 1937 visit to Fort Peck. He referred to Fort, the Fort Peck Dam as a superb example of progress in the near and long term. And he said, it is another illustration of what we have been doing the past few years. We have given useful work to millions of unemployed citizens. We have brought water to dry places, and we've increased and cheapened the use of electricity. 
Due to the projects like Fort Peck, the nation has understood that we are building for future generations of our children and our grandchildren. The money is spent is an investment that will come back a thousandfold in coming years." End quote. In case you don't know, since 1938, the Fort Peck Dam alone, and it's just one in one of the system of six on this river, has prevented nearly $1 million or $1 billion in flood damages. Add in its hydroelectric benefits, the recreation that's, that's had in this area, and the water supply benefits, and you truly have one of the best investments this country has ever made. Certainly, it was an attention grabber back in the day. Many people came here and many people worked here in depression led times. They were able to resurrect their own existence while building a monument which served as a model for many around the world. We know of the many who lived here, more than 50,000 people at one point, and today we will also recognize those who died here. And just look at what they saved, as we said, billions of dollars and thousands of lives. Last year gave the truest picture of the greatness of what those workers started 80 years ago. Indeed, the Missouri River flood of 2011, which hurled the greatest challenge that the Fort Peck Dam has seen, proved those points better than any than any words or, or numbers could. This old heavyweight, this, this legend of a structure, didn't flinch. Just like the dam's creators, both living and dead, the flood of 2011 gave the truest illustration of the greatness of this monument to engineering. You know, there, there was a point at the beginning of the flood where a lot of people were really worried. How would these structures handle this great amount of water? And it, you, know, I, you know, I said to my folks, I said, this, these were built in a time when we did things absolutely the right way. You know, these, these things were built by hand, and it, it, took the, it took that flood with hardly a shudder last year. To all the men and women who believed, and those who doubted, I, I proudly point out one simple fact. It's still here, and it's still functioning today. There's nothing quite so uplifting as watching a 74-year-old legend stand up to the worst and traumatic battering of a lifetime and see it standing in the winter circle when, it all, when it's all said and done. Truly, the legend and its creators stand taller today than ever before. We have gathered to celebrate three quarters of a century of service given by this monolithic structure. The millions of people it protects and the thousands who gave it birth all stand somewhere in this great land or beyond in full salute. We gather to honor the dam, its planners, designers, builders, and maintainers. So many lived just to work on it, and so many died so that it could stand tall, proudly above the valley, deflecting all threats and providing untold benefits to the people downstream. It has stood like a sentinel for 75 years, withstanding snow, wind, rain burst, ice storms, wild charging river flows, seeking to consume homes and livelihoods. Although it was Franklin Delano Roosevelt who commissioned this monstrous dam, it was Teddy's Roosevelt words who truly sum up what happened here in the 1930s. Roosevelt's famous quote paints a picture of the men and women who planned and built the Fort Peck Dam. It applies to those dedicated men and women who maintain this national treasure today. Teddy Roosevelt said, It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who was actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, the man who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But the man who does actually strive to do the deeds, who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, and spends himself on a worthy cause, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who never knew neither victory nor defeat." End quote. Teddy Roosevelt's words are appropriate as we think back to the people who built this dam. Powerful words for a powerful force. The motto of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is SEONS. That means let us try. The men who built the Fort Peck Dam covered that motto in glorious fashion some 75 years ago. Let us quietly and with great pride and dignity think of how their contributions echo through the nation. The ghosts of the men and women who built Fort Peck stand among us today and they would be proud, and they would be proud of you for coming to uh, pay a little bit of homage to the great work that's been done. In preparation of the 75th anniversary, we will <coughs> wanted to honor all those that have worked on Fort Peck Dam. In particular, we wanted to honor those that lost their lives during the construction of the dam. 
Many of you may remember that in 1998, we honored the eight who died in the great slide of 1938. We knew there were more that died during construction and wanted to make sure they were properly remembered. Their names will be engraved on the riprap stones next to those that died in the slide to my right. These large stones were quarried during dam construction from Snake Butte, located near Fort Belknap, Montana. Today we have banners placed on, on these stones listing their names. We have done extensive research to have as complete a list as possible for this event. Based on our research, we have confirmed that 61 people died on the job during the construction of Fort Beck Dam. We have been able to confirm the names of 59 of them. Colonel Rook will now read those 59 names and state what kind of work they performed. Nineteen thirty three, Victor Carlson, core driller. Nineteen thirty four, Dan Anderson, shovel runner. Adolph L. Berg, tunnel foreman. Lloyd F. Burke, drill runner. Clarence Egum, crane helper. Nineteen thirty six, Clarence C. Bernal, steel worker. Sidney G. Conyers, shovel runner. Pearl H. Dixon, brakeman. Ferdinand L. Hickel, drill runner's helper. John H. Hunnewell, tunnel worker. Wyatt B. Jones, welder. William Stevens, tunnel driller. Frank E. Torres, tunnel laborer. Herbert J. Young, steam boiler fireman. 1937, Henry C. Anon, lineman. Elmo Bailey, handyman. Harry J. Christensen, apprentice welder. Glenn Cummings, boiler. Louis Ibon, crane operator. Roy F. Hagen, carpenter's helper. Leonard LaJoy, watchman. John Lindgren, laborer. Charles B. Reed, rodman. Roland Schumacher, electrician's helper. Maurice Weinrich, steel worker. 1938, Oscar Bilstad, brush cutter. Howard W. Brown, laborer. Oliver Booker, Laborer, William Chamberlain, Snake Butte Worker, John I. Johnson, Motorboat Operator, Jess L. Kimmel, Snake Butte Worker, Gregory E. Leichner, Booster Car Oiler, Walter LeBinge, Drill Runner's Helper, Archie Moore, Deckhand, Douglas J. Moore, Associate Superintendent, Dolphy Paulson, laborer. A.E. Fairs, drill helper. Albert Stosser, deckhand. Nelson P. Van Stone, foreman. 1939, William H. Mackey, tunnel worker. 1940, Albert L. Beardsley, Fort Peck railroad engineer. 1941, 